Now the next thing is what is called a baggage. Term is defined under section two subsection three, right? So this I will explain in two parts. One is definition and another is concept. Definition is under section two, subsection three. So we can have a small change here. This I can remove from. Right. As far as definition is concerned, what it says, baggage includes unaccompanied baggage does not include motor vehicles. This is the definition that we have seen, right? I'll show you the definition once again. See the baggage, definition, baggage. Includes unaccompanied baggage, does not include motor vehicles. Okay. This does not clarify anything. I will explain. Now, as far as concept is concerned, the concept will make you understand what is the meaning of the term baggage. Right. So, baggage means these are belongings of a passenger. So, if there is a passenger, only then there is a concept of baggage. Same goods being imported or exported without a passenger will, be, will not be treated as the baggage. And if those are being brought along with the passenger or these are belonging to a passenger, these are referred as baggage. What is the difference? For a baggage, there is a standard rate of duty applicable. There is no classification, no specific valuation. Right. All the goods will be treated as the baggage and there is one standard rate of duty applicable on this. Okay. So belongings of a passenger. Now this baggage can be brought in when the passenger is coming or leaving or this can be before or after the arrival or departure of the passenger so when it is along with the passenger then that is referred as accompanied baggage and when passenger is passenger and baggage are being imported or exported separately then that is referred as unaccompanied baggage so when we read the baggage rules under rule number eight this permission is there the time gap is also referred how much time gap can be there between the arrival of the passenger and the arrival of the baggage so that will refer there okay so this we can divide in two parts Accompanied and unaccompanied baggage. So, accompanied baggage means baggage and passenger both. Enter in India at same time. Then that is referred as accompanied baggage. What happens when you travel by air? Your baggage is already in the aircraft, right? So that is accompanied baggage. But when it is a baggage in access, then your travel and baggage travel may be different, right? Quite possible your baggage is sent in advance or your baggage is held back, that first of all, you go and the baggage will be sent by the next flight. Then that becomes unaccompanied baggage. So in this situation, the passenger and his baggage enter in India at different times that is why it is called unaccompanied baggage right and definition has already said the, the baggage never includes motor vehicles okay so that will apply here as well so definition says this concept is this 
so the concept of baggage is there only when the passenger is there if the passenger is not there there is no baggage same goods brought in india otherwise will be treated as commercial goods those will be classified those will be valued those will be assessed separately but when those are brought in as a baggage then there is no classification all the goods are in one category only that it is a baggage so that those may be garments those may be textile those may be electronic those may be anything right those will be treated as a baggage no classification all the goods are in one classification only but when those are brought in otherwise than as a baggage every goods will be classified separately valued separately then rate of duty will also be independent that is the difference between the baggage and goods being imported as other goods now i'll give you another thing for the term of baggage have you drawn this yes sir yes sir yes sir now again title is baggage now this baggage is divisible in two parts bona fide and and other baggage what is bona fide baggage articles already in use for certain minimum period and under section 79 fully exempt from duty irrespective of value and quantity bona fide baggage means what articles already in use for a certain minimum period what is that certain minimum period that is not in public domain that is known to the officers right so if goods are already in use for that much period then those are treated as this otherwise those will be treated here so entire bona fide baggage is fully exempt from duty irrespective of what is the quantity what is the value so when nris shift to india from outside india and their entire household goods are there no duty on that the reason is this right and those who are frequent travelers between india and outside india they know how to handle this <clears throat> okay i'll simply tell you the easiest way out those who frequently travel they know that if you can open all the packings outside india and bring the goods unpacked all possibilities those are treated as bona fide and no duties payable there possibilities right and lots of practice is done and that is also commonly accepted then other baggage other baggage means anything other than bona fide now this is again divided in two categories so first is exempt and then comes dutyable so this is fully exempt in addition to that there is some exemption in other baggage also so this is also under section 79 the central government has prescribed monetary exemption limits bona fide fully exempt other than that bona fide government has prescribed monetary limits for exemption right so this is exempt this is also exempt now this limit is monetary if the value is exceeding that monetary limit duty will become payable only on that excess portion so baggage exceeding exemption limit that will be dutyable 
एंड ऑन दिस ड्यूटी इज एट द रेट ऑफ थर्टी फाइव परसेंट Have you understood this? So, what is the difference between bona fide and exempted goods? Sir? Bona fide and exempted goods, sir. These are already in use. These are new articles. These are articles already in use, and these are other means. These are new articles. These are fully exempt, irrespective of quantity, irrespective of value. And here, for the new article, there is an the exemption limit, a monetary limit for exemption. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Duty free items will be exempt. No. Duty free items will be taken into this limit, right? But in general, nobody takes care of that. So whatever you buy from duty free, generally, what what is bought from the duty free shops? What is purchased? chocolates who buy chocolates you are happy chocolates is a baby what else he buys other with the chocolates yes for that kids what he buys for himself <laughs> nothing <laughs> okay so 99% cases the duty free shopping is for <clears throat> liquor hmm? tea totaler you must have made him like that hmm? it is your duty you must have done it so 99% cases people coming from abroad they will buy good cigarettes they will buy good liquor duty free right and actually that is covered within the limit monetary limit okay but when the goods are purchased from duty free generally nobody bothers okay and the exemption limits are also quite high when we read, when we read the rules baggage rules you will find that as such no problems for buying the goods from duty free shops so this was all the basic about what we refer as applicability of customs 